Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has launched yet another update to the Gemini 2.5 Pro model before general availability. This is most probably going to be the final iteration of this model. It is now called Gemini 2.5 Pro Preview 0605, which is different from the previous version, which was 0506. It's a very similar name, but it's now different. They say, We're introducing an upgraded preview of Gemini 2.5 Pro, our most intelligent model yet. Building on the version we released in May and showed at I.O., this model will be the generally available, stable version starting in a couple of weeks, ready for enterprise-scale applications. They also mention that the latest 2.5 Pro reflects a 24-point ELO score jump on El Marina, maintaining its lead on the leaderboard at 1470, and a 35-point ELO jump to lead on Web Dev Arena at 1443. It continues to excel at coding, leading on difficult coding benchmarks like Ader Polyglot. It also shows top-tier performance on GPQA and Humanity's Last Exam, which are highly challenging benchmarks that evaluate a model's math, science, knowledge, and reasoning capabilities. They have also addressed feedback from their previous 2.5 Pro release, improving its style and structure. It can now be more creative with better formatted responses. They also say that developers can start building with the upgraded preview of 2.5 Pro in the Gemini API via Google AI Studio and Vertex AI, where they've also added thinking budgets to give developers more control over cost and latency. It's also rolling out today in the Gemini app. So, you can now set the thinking budget for Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is awesome because previously we weren't able to do that and it could cost a lot in some cases. But now it allows for that, letting you use it much more efficiently and with control over the costs. It costs the same as before, which is $1.25 for input and $10 for output until 200k tokens, while for a million, the output gets up to $15 and input gets about $2.50, which is really competitive pricing. This model now seems much better at things like Ader's Polyglot, where it now scores the SOTA scores, which is quite impressive. It also shows the best scores on Simple QA, while it lacks a bit in AIM as well as Live Code Bench, which is fine, but not as great. In long context benchmarks, it also performs extremely well. You can use this model in Google's AI Studio completely free while it is also available via the API, which is quite good as well. I have tested it on my benchmark questions, and it obviously performs extremely well. Plus, it is now really good at front-end, visual understanding, and coding. I haven't tested it in depth, but it is really good at complex stuff, like making super complex SVGs or back-end tasks that can get super challenging which is quite awesome to see with this model. You can use this model in both Klein and RuCode and Kylo code, but they don't support the thinking budget option yet. So, that's an issue. But if you want, you can still do that. Let me show you how you can configure it as well. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Dart Dart is the only truly AI native project management tool that you'll ever need. You can use it to manage your tasks for a project, create multiple boards, organize them, and do everything that you generally do. But you can also use AI with it to manage your tasks. For example, you can ask it to generate tasks for you by brainstorming or planning projects, as well as performing duplicate detection to keep you focused. You can even assign whole tasks to Dart and it can get them done for you. You can use their composer-like AI agent that has the context of all your tasks and you can chat in natural language to just ask it to do something. It can delete tasks, create tasks, edit tasks, and handle multiple things like that. Apart from this, 
you can integrate it into your AI clients or coders with its MCP server, which allows your MCP client or coder to reference tasks from your dartboards. You can even integrate it into Claude, ChatGPT, and much more. Most of the features in Dart are free, while you can also get the $8 subscription for more features. Make sure that you check Dart out through the link in the description. Now, back to the video. You can do that by just heading over to VS Code and making sure that you have updated Klein and RuCode is also updated to the latest version. Now, you can go ahead to Klein, and in the settings, you can easily set the provider to Gemini, and then select the new model. It should also become available on Requesty and Open Router as well, and then you can use it through there. You can also configure it similarly in RuCode by heading over there, and then setting it up with a new profile, which you can name anything. Then just choose the provider between Requesty, Open Router, and everything. And then just select and set up the new model, and you should be good to go. None of them support the thinking budget for these models yet, but it should probably come soon. We'll see about that. If you want to use it for free, then you can use Kilo Code, which gives you $20 of free credit. That should allow you to get it set up with the new Gemini 2.5 Pro model, and you can use it for free that way and take it for a spin before committing. Kylo code is basically just Roo code with some added features by the developers of this. This new model, from what I can see, is better than the previous one in most ways, and I only see improvements. It is great to see, because you're getting these updates without the shenanigans of higher costs and stuff, and without costing you more or anything like that. I hope that they also come out with the deep think option as well, because I'd like that, and it would be a great challenge to things like O3. I have been a fan of Gemini 2.5 Pro because it is cheaper and better across all aspects for me, and you can surely give this model a try if you thought that Claude was edging out your tasks by a bit because these new updates should make it much better across the board without breaking the bank like Claude Sonnet or Claude Opus does, which is awesome. Things like Jewels and Stitch and similar tools should also have been updated to use this new model, because the previous endpoint points to the new model, I believe. And even if it doesn't, they would have updated it, I believe. So, there's that. I really like this new update, and I will take it for a spin and see what's up with the new model, because I haven't given it enough time yet since it has just launched. It should be kind of cool for most tasks, I believe, but I'll report on how it turns out. So, stay tuned for new updates by subscribing to the channel. We are very close to 100k, so please subscribe if you haven't already. I really like this new update and thought to talk about this as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.